Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today entitled The Future of AI in H and HR in Singapore and Malaysia. I'm Kevin Fitzgerald. I'm the Managing Director for Employment Hero in Asia, and I live in Singapore. Today, our panel of esteemed guest speakers will be delving into the latest sentiments from HR professionals and the future of AI within HR, a very hot topic, I would say. Throughout the discussion today, I'll be reflect, referencing some findings from our recent Superhuman report, where we surveyed 615 HR professionals across Singapore and Malaysia. This was a range of size of companies, so not just attributed to MNCs, it was all across SMEs, some, are, some of which are current customers. These unique insights will aid in some of our discussions today. Um, some housekeeping, we have allocated time at the end of the webinar for your questions. So please do not hesitate to type in the questions and we will address all that we can towards the end of the webinar. You can do this by adding into the chat box at the bottom of your Zoom, Zoom screens. Following the end of the webinar, you'll be presented with a short survey, which we would really appreciate and love you to fill in. We will also record this session so you can watch it back. And for anybody who hasn't been able to attend it live, a big hello to you and thank you for giving us your time. Now, with all of that housekeeping done, I have the pleasure of introducing um, two amazing panelists who are specialists in their space. Ravi Nipani, Associate Partner, APAC Middle East and Africa from Aon. Aon is a household name. Ravi is an associate partner and as a senior member of the advisory team, he has the responsibility for leading HR transformation projects with companies all across Asia Pacific. He is also the regional leader for technology and life sciences industries in APAC. Welcome, Ravi. Jenny Thanks, Oi Kevin. is the CEO and founder of Jenny Oi and Associates. Jenny is the founder and managing consultant of that business. With 30 years of diverse working experience, Jenny believes in business-focused HR solutions to organizations. In recent years, Jenny is also the regional director for Thermomix Malaysia and Brunei. A very busy lady, and welcome and thank you for your time. Thank you. So let's kick off by speaking about the overall sentiment towards AI in Southeast Asia. It's, it's, it's very much in a, you know, what we see online as a hype cycle. You know, everyone's excited, but doesn't really know, you know, what it, what it can offer. So today we really want to speak about, you know, the benefits, how people are using it, what's the opportunity and, and what are the challenges? And we know it's been used by some degree, but our report, which was surveyed of 615 HR professionals, showed that 99% of HR leaders in Malaysia and 98% of HR leaders in Singapore are using some form of AI. So there's clearly um, some very quick adoption, but the depth of that usage is something that, you know, we we're trying to figure out, you know, how are people actually using it? So Ravi, could you share with us how your business Aon is using AI to streamline HR processes? And, and can, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, the why behind it? Like how did it come come about for the business and what is the driver? All right. Uh, so Kevin, very honestly speaking, AI has been in, in some form of existence for a fairly long time. You know, it's, it's just moved to the next phase, so to speak. And as a consulting firm, we have been using AI in a lot of our solutions and a lot of our tools for, for a very, very long time. And our clients are, you know, very used to it. And because we, a lot of our decision making is based on actual data uh, and huge amounts of data. So there needs to be some bit of AI for it to make more sense and be more realistic, right? So just to give you a few examples, we have our assessment tools, which allows organizations to not only assess candidates at the time of recruitment, but also to look at their own internal resources and see who is actually fit for a particular job that the organization is looking to fill. And the candidate might not have even applied for it. So it kind of gives you that kind of a view, which allows you to make real-time decisions, even make those calls. So that's one, right? The second is even like a simple employee engagement survey. And, and Aon has probably is the only one that has this, which is a neuro-based engagement survey, which allows you to 
almost dissect the intrinsic and the extrinsic uh, values of it. L let me use a simple example. If you ask a candidate or, or an employee to say, are you happy with your manager? Mm -hmm. Eight out of 10 times in, in the Asian context, everybody's going to say yes, because the fear of the repercussion and the unknown is much stronger, right? So as so if you use this tool, it, it gives you of saying what was the extrinsic code, which is what they said, but what they really mean is where the intrinsic score comes. And that's because when you are not responding something that truly is part of you, you take that extra nanosecond or a couple of nanoseconds to respond. And, and that's mm -hmm. AI right there, right? Uh, for you to kind of get, get you both scores. And then you can form your own decisions as your uh, you know, making decisions on what works for you as an organization for your employee. A simple thing is compensation benchmarking, which has been in, in use, I don't know for how long, probably mm -hmm. 100 plus years, right? Uh, our tools are AI generated for you to give you a lot of insights of what new jobs are looking like. Like an AI developer right now is probably the hottest property. But if I go to any of the compensation server, you won't really find much information there, right? Because that's just a new skill. But is there a way to kind of look at the past trends of these hot skills and say how they're evolving? What could be the premium in the market? What will it look like in a couple of years from now? So all of those, uh, you know, uh, are done and we're using a lot of generative AI in in, in our solutions. Brilliant. And, and clearly there are two examples of how <clears throat> this great impact Right, like you know, the surveys you can get, you can dig a bit deeper. You know, like you're getting closer yeah. to the truth, the the truth. You know, so to speak. And I guess with the the understanding of trying to benchmark something that's new, you know, like actually using the tools is is just fascinating. Jenny, yeah. what what we saw from the the report, Jenny, for for Malaysia was um, quite a high number of HR professionals in Malaysia are using AI for employee performance monitoring. You know, it sits at forty six percent. What do you believe is the the drivers behind this emphasis on performance assessment? You know, when I first saw the data, I was a little surprised. I said, "Wow, that's pretty high at forty six percent, right?" Uh, but as I dig in, you know, I was pleased to see that there was a large number of respondents. There's about three hundred over, so I think the sample size is pretty good. Now, uh, when you look into it, you see that it's See, in Malaysia, we have a lot of large multinational companies and they are in the manufacturing sector. And therefore, it makes all sense, right, for an activity that is so crucial, the performance appraisal, to use some form of AI to ensure fair distribution of uh, the funds, the increments, uh, fair distribution of actually the performance rating, right, uh, between various leaders, there's no biasness. So I must say, pretty pleased, very pleased to know it's 46%. Now, as you drill down, you see AI, that's the name we give it today. Uh, but it has been around for a long, long time, right? I, I am in my 50s. So I remember my first job in Intel a long, long time ago, right? <laughs> Even Microsoft has some form of uh, artificial intelligence. Of course, at that time, it was called machine learning, right? Mm -hmm. And so, if you look at that answer about what is AI, and you look at the composition of uh, companies in Malaysia, 46% makes a lot of sense. Yeah, and it's it, you're so correct. Like, the, the description AI can mean so many different things to people, and it can yeah. depend on the role that you do in the, in the company as well. So, you know, obviously, um, we wanted to share with our, our audience today, what are the benefits that we see? So we can see the majority, actually 83% of HR professionals in Singapore believe that AI can enhance efficiency. And 77% in Malaysia express excitement around the transformational potential. So question to you both, um, whoever, whoever speaks first can answer this one. Um, <laughs> we, we've seen a significant level of I guess you could call it optimism amongst HR professionals in, in both Singapore and Malaysia with the potential to enhance efficiency. But, you know, people want to be able to measure results and, and, and benefits. 
How do you think this optimism compares to the sentiments in your own organizations? How would you compare? You know, Ravi, for East, you can go ahead for all questions first. <laughs> then we don't have to second guess each other. <laughs> That's good. Uh, uh, I, I think in Aeon, we are super excited uh, because of the unknown, right? And and I using the word unknown in a very loose term. Uh, the reason why nobody knows the impact of what AI is going to have in our day-to-day -day jobs. Now, when I don't know how jobs are changing or how the industry is evolving, my solutions need to be ahead of time, right? So that mm -hmm. I'm in a position to be able to consult to my clients. Uh, like, a, like a very simple example, in today's day and age, which company is not a tech company? The whole definition of technology as an industry has changed. Now, depending on who you ask, is fintech a financial services industry or a tech industry? <laughs> or uh, insure tech, right? Uh, or any of these ride hailing uh, organizations, are they really a logistics company or are they a tech company? You know, so a lot of things is converging. So I can only see that even our solutions are getting, you know, uh, in a way intermingled of how we servicing our clients. And I, and I can see a lot of the technology platforms, even within Aon that our clients use, a lot of is changing. So there's a lot of buzz and excitement about what AI is going to bring. But I think there's also the unknown. But I think the unknown, I would say, is a good and a positive uh, connotation mm -hmm. to it rather than the negative side of the unknown uh, so I think a lot of our solutions are evolving as well, Kevin, right now. And what, what about you, Jenny? How do you think the optimism compares to the sentiments in your respective organizations? The optimism of the report is quite high, but what, what about your own business? So I'm reminded when I first took on a HR role. So I come from the men of... Uh, so my background is finance, then I went to supply chain and different roles and end up in HR. And I think by that, it was the mid 90s, right? So some of the listeners here today, you're not even born yet, I suppose. <laughs> now, and I remember that time being the HR person and uh, YouTube just came out, right? And I remember the CEO uh, was concerned. He said, wow, what is this YouTube thing, you know? And he said, our people are going to waste time, right? They're going to uh, loaf around and watch YouTube. He said, so at that time, I remember there were plans to ask IT, you know, can you check the IP address? How do you block YouTube access in the mm -hmm. office, right? And then the next thing was Facebook, right? How do you block Facebook access from the <laughs> office? You know? So when the HR fellas, when we get together, that was the question. But hey, look at it. After a while, everybody has it on their phone, right? And it has more good than bad, right? So I see the same thing is going to happen for AI. Um, I am excited. I've been using it, I would say, more and more, uh, especially you know, after the, 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 uh, the, 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 what's that? The explosion of chat GPT, right? Uh, and I actually learned it from my people. And I said, and you're saying, oh, you just asked. I said, what do you mean by you just ask? You know, I <laughs> the earlier seasons, right? I said, what do you mean by you just ask that? You ask anything. You can even ask, uh, uh, give me a joke, right? And I said, <laughs> they give you a joke, right? I said, not funny. Give me another funnier joke, right? So although it was funny initial stage, but I see so much good, right? How? Let me give you an example. For example, in the past, I would have to review my people's work. For example, there is a team that's more junior. And uh, when if they were to write something, you know, they were to craft an article, I literally have to go through, you know, spell check, do the grammar, mm -hmm. the context. These days, I don't even have to do that because the work they produce is even better than what I could imagine, right? So there goes, ladies and gentlemen, you must check things out. De definitely agree and and uh, you know i can feel your excitement i'm sure that the listeners can could you could you give us like you know that that's a great example around you know simple time savings but also i think for a tool that can help someone you know with, maybe with their grammar and actually how they communicate is also learning and development 
you know so the technology is not just doing a task it's actually helping someone develop and they'll learn and and see you know much uh, stronger and, and better ways to do things what about in your in your business in terms of you know in decision making like have you seen benefits as a result of using ai you know help you get to a decision faster or you know make sure you don't make the wrong decision could you is there anything that you could share with us Oh, yeah. I mean, data analysis, uh, supply chain optimization, you name it from any area, right? So let's say, take it back to the to the manufacturing sector. Uh, AI existed, I think, 20, 30 years ago through camera optimization. So they mm -hmm. will detect something that is off from the standard. You know, initial years, it was that. Thereafter, you could add weight to it. You can add... Uh, speed, you know, of things, and uh, it helps. No, there's no way an operator can do a better job. Okay, mm. now the operator can do the finer details, but seriously, for large volume, our eyes get tired, right? And uh, in supply chain is demand prediction. Um, you can using the next cell, you can add one or two elements, but if you're gonna add a uh, triple time. Time, you're gonna add a uh, uh, vendor A B C D. You know the parts together. When is you can't right? Mm. So um, I would really suggest there are many HR professionals here. I suppose for you to explore some of the tools, and because a lot of the tools these days they still require some form of uh, payment, right? So yeah. uh, most employees will not pay out of their pocket to try some something that's used for the company. So I would suggest HR leaders set aside some budget. It's not expensive, right? Some of it is what, eight US a month, right? So you try for a month and then you explore several tools. It's amazing, right? Resource uh, scenario analysis so that you don't make mistakes, you know, uh, optimal yeah. staffing and things like that. Amazing, right? Um, even notes taking, uh, many of us in meetings will take down notes and sometimes you don't see the light of day but there's so many tools today that you can write you can type and you can just dump in they will know how to put in the right drawer for you yeah and it's it, it even from our, our own perspective we use we use ai tools to help our, our sales teams you know mm. like we we, rec we record all, all of their calls it gives us a it gives us reports on the the impact and the effectiveness of the the sales call and the the demonstration and you know like when when I was I started working like over twenty five years ago things like that just weren't even a conversation around possibility you know so yeah. it's just amazing to see what leaders you know employees actually have at their fingertips and and you're right Jenny like this stuff is not expensive for the for the the benefit that you get you know. Um, uh, Kevin, if sorry, I can Robbie, just you, you add jump in. in, yeah, yeah. No, I just wanted to also give the other perspective of how businesses can really benefit from AI, right? Uh, let's, uh, and I'll take an example of one of our clients that we're helping is an let's say ride hailing company. You know, uh, we've based on the large amounts of data and generative AI, we've been able to create certain personas uh, mm. for for the organization and tell them what are those personas of a good driver, you know, that, oh, that wow. work with your firm. Now, now you can ask me, oh, that's such a simple thing, but look at the uh, impact that a simple AI tool can do is not only help the brand image because the number of negative impressions that a driver leaves on the media or people are leaving comes massively down, right? So that's one. Second is it it's a big saving on the insurance side because the number of mm. accidents, people who are driving for long hours, they focus, all of that comes together. And when you choose the right driver, your insurance liabilities come down. Uh, so so it's, it's, yeah, like it, it, it has multiple repercussions, you know, at, at various levels. And an AI, like Jenny was saying, is only going to make life much better, mm -hmm. uh, both at an individual and I think at an organization level as well. I agree. And that's a great example of um, using the tools to, you know, benefit from stronger employee performance yeah like in re in reality in, in any technology company or any industry 
you know, the effectiveness of, of people is absolutely critical. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's many business leaders that I speak to and, you know, a lot can be, you know, obviously trying to drive growth and, and, you know, selling is a, is a, is a tough job, right? Like, and, yeah. and really, if you look, you know, inside your business and look at opportunity and you mentioned around being able to look at your current staff capabilities when hiring, um, I just think that's, that's a fascinating opportunity for, for HR leaders to grab and to delve deeper into. And it's really, you know, for me, there's, there's a benefit to the business clearly, but the benefit to the employee, yeah. you know, they, they feel more valued, they will contribute more, they can offer more to the company. And, you know, that has a knock on effect, I think, to teammates as well. They start to see all of those benefits coming through. So, switching from from benefits and and really you know considering how we assess the value you know like the you know what is it like what is it what is it factually bringing you know to to businesses who use it we we saw in a report in in singapore almost 50 percent of surveyed hr professionals prioritize cost savings when assessing the the return on investment of ai and we do know in singapore and and malaysia people are who run SMEs are extremely cost conscious and the, the current economic climate is, you know, for want of a, a, a more professional description, it's wonky. You know, we just don't know what's going to happen next week, next month. Right. Malaysian professionals, on the other hand, are keen on evaluating AI tools based on their speed and efficiency. And, and they measure the return on investment by the time saved. So Singapore is focused on cost. And Malaysia's focused on time. Jenny, mm-hmm. how can businesses address the varying levels of confidence and measuring a you know the the return on investment? And particularly amongst employees, juniors, how how do they come together to really measure the, the value? So I would say you measure time, you measure cost, actually you're measuring the same thing, right? Because time is money, right? So um, based on my years of running global organization, right? Um, I think the cost for AI is still so cheap. Of course, unless you were to buy one big tool for one role, then you need to measure. But for now, um, you see as a leader, what gets talked about gets done, right? So what you continuously talk about, your people will take note that, oh, she means this. This is important, right? Uh, so uh, talk about AI. Maybe every two weeks when the team gets together for a meeting, ask the question, hey, anybody discover any new tool, right? Um, I have learned that for now, don't spend on something that's too expensive because technology is moving so fast. Uh, You know, like what Kevin said, things are going to get wonky. For all you know, something that you spend 100,000 now, you only need to spend 2,000 by the end of the year, right? So go slow. Check out all the free tools because it allows you to make mistakes without thinking too much about, oh, should I try, should I not, right? Go for the cheap ones. Um, So I'd say, speak about it. Right. Ask everyone, hey, anybody uh, got any new tools on scheduling? You know, scheduling meetings is so, it takes so much effort, right? Scheduling meetings, right? And then rescheduling, you know. Uh, right now, the tools are so cheap. Now, uh, analysis, a study shows that people spend one month every year cleaning up their inbox. Can you imagine? One month a year to clean up your inbox. And now there's tools for it, right? It will auto trash you know things that they see a while that you don't read you will just move it uh in the past we set some rules right but now the 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 tools do it for you so anything that that helps our employees to focus right uh easy right like like i say i mean mailbox scheduling uh writing uh, Singapore, I would say, is much better. From Malaysia, I would say our level of English. I've known of staff who take at least four hours, you know, uh, to draft a paper, right? Because you're going to correct the English, you're going to do this. But right now, that is done in, what, half an hour. And it does it better than us, right? So do that. 
talk about it, try it, pay some money. It's really cheap. Yeah, and it's 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 like the the question around assessing the value. It's clear the value is there. It's it's mm. it's relatively easy to measure. Mm. If a if a task previously took four hours, now it's less than thirty minutes. That's yeah. that's huge. You know, like mm. and and really, is something that that's always fascinated me is is that example of how long people take to do tasks that aren't uh, related to growing the business. Yeah. Correct. You know, like it, there's just so many people just doing things and, and you know, it's yeah. it's we, we, we obviously need to encourage, you know, and as you said, Jenny, like speak yeah. about it every two weeks. Um, it, I think if it was me, I'd be every two days, <laughs> you know, it's it's just like, <laughs> hey, guys, you know, let's get on with it. And, and to share with, with you and, and the audience, like our, we are a tech company, but um, a few months ago, our CEO just sent a note to everybody saying, you have total permission to use ChatGPT to find ways to do your job quicker. And and that message alone just gave everybody direction, but also permission to try because some people were like, oh, are we allowed to use this? Is there, you know, concerns yeah. in the business? And he just said, he told everybody, he said, I'm using it daily yeah. to write emails with presentations and, you know, it saved me so much time. So I think the, the leadership have, um, got to give the encouragement, yeah. Mm. True. What about yourself, Ravi? Like, how 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 does Aon and yourself and your own team how how would you measure the impact? Like, how can we effectively prove it? Like, uh, for me, it it's it's a simple ask of does the benefit outweigh the investment, right? Um, mm. for and and the reason why I say that is uh, because we consult organizations from across different spectrums of the industries, so it has to kind of make sense for us mm. right and and without a doubt like jenny and you have said ai is only there to make our lives better but we need to find what would fit in our scheme of things and for us if benefit outweighs the investment there's a no-brainer for a yeah. simple reason you just then providing better solutions to your clients right mm. and uh, so so we use certain i would say yardsticks uh, as mm. we're making those decisions one would be are we clearly defining the objectives that we want from the AI tool? Is there is that tool for improving efficiency? Is it for customer experience? Or is it going to reduce cost? You need to be very clear on why and what are you using for, right? Second is the baseline measurement of it. Like, are we setting a baseline key performance indicators of how thing or your life is going to get better because of, mm. of that implementation? Third, I would say would be the cost analysis. Uh, and when I say cost analysis is not how much does it cost to implement it, but more of the ancillary cost of setting up the tool, what's the infrastructure cost, what's the learning cost, how many man hours does it take for people to learn it and be more effective before you stop making mistakes on a regular basis, you know? And I think uh, in, in a consulting environment, the fourth is probably the dearest to my heart would be the qualitative assessment. Speak to mm -hmm. your uh, end customers to find out, are they really seeing the benefit? Because rest, most of the other ones will be financial impacts, but this would give you the non-financial. Are they really happy with what they're seeing because of the AI tool? Whether it's your mm -hmm. internal teams, whether it's your external customers, does not matter. But you need to get that satisfaction pulse from them to to kind of make those calls out of the five tools that you might implement you might say okay i'm going to go with the three two yeah. is not working for me you know so yeah. yeah i think i think that's really helpful advice like you know to to break it down and discuss and, and figure it out but ultimately it's all about trying right like getting absolutely get, you know getting getting involved and, and getting it started yeah. rather than you know, keeping it pushed away all the time. Yeah. And, you know, that, that could be some of the reasons for that could be the the concerns, the challenges, the unknown, the fear. So, you know, I really wanted to switch into the topic of, of concerns and challenges. And even though there's significant um, positivity and enthusiasm in Malaysia and Singapore, there's also reservations. And, and yeah. I would say that's totally normal and, and to be expected. Um, in Malaysia, you know, 55% of, of people who responded are concerned about ethical implications. Mm. 
and mm. 48% are worried about job loss. Mm. That's probably not a surprise to us. Sing- mm. Singapore is similar, um, but actually with a higher level of concern. So mm. compared to 48% in Malaysia, 65% of respondents in Singapore are concerned about ethical implications, but especially mm. around privacy, lack mm. of trust and transparency and, and governance. You know, mm. so you can see, mm. you know, people are thinking about different things, but ultimately it does come back to, you know, question around how does this work? What if this mm. happens? How do we protect, mm. you know, the business that we're in? How do we protect our people? And I think with any technology change, we will always hear about people concerned about job loss. It's it's mm. it's just an ongoing challenge. Mm. So Jenny, how how can organizations mm. find that balance between you know, the testing and the trying and the give it a go and, and checking the capabilities while also, you know, addressing mm. concerns that the business have around, mm. um, you know, the, I guess the information, yeah? Yeah, so it's true. So mm. chat GPT, if I will focus on chat GPT, uh, whatever you feed, it will then reju- they'll take it out again, right? So people could intentionally feed wrong data and chat GPT will not be able to filter it. Okay. So that's why the human factor is still important. And that links us to the second question of, will I lose my job? Mm -hmm. So I can say, yes, you will lose a lot of the very uh, task oriented jobs, right? Uh, Repetitive jobs. We see it now. I mean, the last couple of months, there are many jobs that have gone away, right? Now, uh, what kind of jobs, like I said, if it's repetitive, if it's uh, crunching data, all that will go away. So people need to know. And if you're a HR leader, you need to plan for that. And how do you upskill your employees? Mm -hmm. It will go away because the system is going to do things faster than what people can do. Now, there is no difference than what happened 20, 30 years ago. Same thing. It was human beings that were working on the production floor, right? And then thereafter, automation came in. What do we do with the operators? The operators then do better jobs, uh, take over some of the technician's job. And the technician takes over some of the engineer's job. And the engineer's take over some of the higher level engineers job. So for example, if it's Penang, if it's the factories here in Malaysia, even in Singapore, right? Because I managed mm. that. Then uh, as our people move up the value chain, so what happens to our engineers? Our engineers will then take jobs that are uh, used to be done by uh, R&D engineers, both in US and Europe, right? So I think it's good for everyone. All of us can do a higher value job and guess what? The best thing is we see an increase in the average income of our people. So it is a win-win, right? So yeah. the average salary increased significantly uh, in five years. Significantly, it, it wasn't a slowly, but you can see it was an uptick curve. Yeah. So if we talk about AI from that perspective, that means with that in mind that, yeah, the job will go away. We don't have to hide it. It's real. It will go away. And therefore, what do you do? Yeah. Thank you, Jenny. I, I think that's such a such a good perspective as well. Like, and it, it it's great to hear that also average salary is going up because yeah. it, it, pro- it proves, you know, this is not about just doing it for your company or your boss. This is mm-hmm. actually about connecting the technology to, to the human, you know, and improving their lives as well. And, you know, I, I, I do think about this quite a lot and, you know, trying to illustrate, you know, two people, you know, and, and they have the same choice. And, and one is naturally, actually both are naturally fearful around the change and will this take my job? And one person goes left and tries to protect and control and, you know, keep their job and that's their mindset. And the other person says, look, you know, this is going to happen anyway. I may as well just get started, you know, not, not get to the finish, just get started. And then you fast forward six months and one person's still stuck 
and the other person is six months ahead and yeah. internally in the business, you know, the bosses, our peers are seeing this person and yeah. all their focus is like, wow, this person knows this stuff. And, you know, and then they start to flourish, right? Like as an individual, they're helping different. And honestly, I think yeah. that snowball effect of like the, the personal development just keeps going. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's with, with any technology change, it's, it is a choice, but mm. I know which path I would rather take, you know, yeah. and there's been yeah. times where I've been over here as well. And I'm like, Oh my God, you know, there's so much change happening, but you really got to, you got to, we got to take that leap. Yeah. And see what's, what's around the corner. Yeah. And Kevin, if I can just quickly add in, and, and this is not me, I saw uh, an, an economist speak and I just thought would be quite relevant to this discussion is if you look at, let's assume we are in industrial revolution 4.0 right now. If you look at over the years, industrial revolution one, two, three, have all seen enormous technology come into play, right? At, at mm. different levels, whether it was manufacturing or IT or whatever. Statistically, the number of unemployment rates have actually dropped uh, mm. over the centuries, right? So for me, that's just indicated enough to say technology does not completely take away jobs. What it does is to Jenny's point, you know, it elevates the quality of the jobs that people are doing. And that's at some level, I guess there are people who, who are not comfortable with that change, but too bad, mm. I guess you just need to adapt because it just becomes yeah. integral, right? Uh, mm. to, to all our lives. We don't have a choice. Yeah. But you know, and, and, and maybe we don't have a choice. You know, okay. it, it was I was I was laughing at Jenny's description of her, you know, the length of her career. There was a time when I was traveling overseas and working and I didn't have a mobile phone. Oh yeah. You know, and now, yeah, and now I kind of think I was like, how did I do my job? You know, and yeah. I, I, I remember like, you know, it's like, oh, you need to plug into this system and all this stuff. And I was like, oh, mm. you know, how like it's just phenomenal to think backwards, right? Like of how far yeah. we've come. Yeah. Um and how much we've learned that we don't even realize, you know, and, and we, we had to make that choice as well. Yeah. True. Ravi, Aon are, are clearly specialists, you know, in, 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 in this space and you consult to a lot of businesses. Um, what about your clients? Like how do, how do you, how do you speak to them about their concerns over ethical implications and, and governance of AI? I think um, it, for me, ethical will have to come it, it's a two-way street, you know, uh, it can't just be one or one way. And I think, again, a lot of medium-sized to large-sized organizations all have kind of frameworks around their ethical do's and don'ts and so on. But if I look at more specific to AI, and, and, and I'm saying this also because a lot is evolving. Uh, and I don't think it's currently regulated so much because I don't think anybody understands uh, the true definition of AI and what it's going to mean. So I think uh, a lot of governments across the globe are kind of evolving around. But I, I look at it in three, four pillars. One is the ethical AI guidelines um, that mm -hmm. organizations will need to defy that. And what is ethical will differ from industry to industry because you know, just the nature, the data, and the amount of AI that you would use in your business would also differ. So so what yeah. is right, what is wrong would differ. Like uh, you were talking about, Kevin, that in your organization, your CEO is okay with you guys using AI chat GPT, right? They could be in a regulated environment uh, with a lot of client data in an FI setup, let's assume. They might mm -hmm. not be okay. So then that brings out the differences of what's right for your business versus what's right for somebody else's business, right? Second, I would say, depending on which market we are operating in, the data privacy norms would come into play, whether it's GDPR, mm -hmm. it's CCPA, whatnot. Uh, I think that will again be very, very critical because at the end of the day, it's data going out as well, right? And, and mm -hmm. you have no control on where that data is going as well. For me, equally important, and, and to continue the conversation that we were having of our jobs going away. I would say, irrespective of what technology we use, what AI comes into play, for me, it's human oversight uh, will be yeah. absolutely necessary. There has to be those checks yeah. and balances that somebody will have to keep check. I know a lot of discussion goes around, is technology going to learn and get to a point where it starts making decisions, but still somebody needs to rope it in, right? So, so I think the human oversight is going to be very, very important. Uh, and 
And I think like a lot of regulated places, I would say a third party audit might not be a mm. bad idea uh, yeah. so that there are no loopholes that come up or there's big scandals that blow up a few years later, which will tarnish organization and the images. So I would look at it in those three, four broad categories. Mm. And with, the, with your clients, when you're having these conversations, is are the concerns a reason is it a strong enough reason to say no and not do anything? Or do you feel like the sentiment is they understand it, like they, they respect the, the concern, but they're trying to find solutions? Like where, where are they at on that journey? It would differ, Kevin. It depends on whom mm. I'm speaking to. If I'm speaking to a sunset industry, they take yeah. on it as very different. They're like, we're still heavily manufacturing or or a supply chain kind of a industry and technology that is needed is more restricted only to machines uh, yeah. and nothing more, right? Whereas if I speak to a startup or a tech industry, that's going to be very different because for them, it's bread and butter, right? Their yeah. tools need to evolve with AI because that's where the world's going. Or in a way, I would say they have the custodians of how AI is going to look like. Uh, so, so very, very different conversations. I would say somewhere in the middle would be the regulated industries that are heavily regulated, mm -hmm. like an insurance, a finance, and so on. Um, but I think what is happening by and large is that everybody is of the opinion that AI is going to change. Now, how soon? I guess that's the question. For some industries, it's here. And for some, mm -hmm. they're like three years, five years away from whatever their machines will expect to do. I think it's very similar to the big data uh, conversation that we were having a few years back. Yeah. You know, yeah. There are certain industries that's integral to how they're operating. And there are some who still are sitting on big data, but not really uh, utilizing the information as much as they should. Yeah. And it, 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 it's so true. It's, it's, you know, we need skilled, talented, experienced people yeah. to drive the machines. You know, like, I, I think that's it. Like, I know people probably have this, like, visual in their head of suddenly they wake up someday and <clears throat> everything's automated. You know, I kind of wish, like, there was a lot more things automated in my life. And it's, it's um, yeah. we're not there yet, you know. And could it be 50 years, 100 years? Like, <laughs> we just we just don't know. Like, society, people will develop, technology will develop. So, ex exciting roads ahead. Yeah. Um, so, you know, to, to everybody online, I, I really hope that you're you're enjoying this this conversation and and it's useful. Um, I really wanted to um give plenty of time for for Q and A, and there is quite a lot of questions come through. So, if you do have questions, please add them into the, the chat box, and and one of us will will address um as best we can. But I did want to do, give you three things to think about. You know, in terms of how do you how do you take your next step? So wherever you are right now, how do you take the next step? And really, from my perspective, it's we have to embrace the AI's potential in HR. We have to figure out the, you know, how can we have the efficiency and the human-centered tasks actually taken care of. Um, so that's a that's a big thing I think HR leaders need to look at. We need to prioritize ethical AI practices. You know, as 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 we just spoke about, it's important to figure them out for your business and what's important, and also for the region that you're in our country, what are the what's the legislation that's there right now in terms of data privacy? And really number three is is utilize the right systems with, with AI features. There is a lot of talk in technology companies around AI, but I think it's important to take a step back and look at the technology that's available in your current company and, and go speak to the vendor and, and ask them to explain in detail what yeah. what, are, what are they investing because if they don't invest, you don't get the opportunity, you know? So it's it's really important to figure that out. Ravi or, or, or Jenny, anything to add before we go into the questions? Anything that you'd like to say? You know, um, a very simple definition for potential. Right? Whenever we are assessing candidates of various levels, we say, hey, this guy has potential. This guy does not have potential. What, what does that mean? A simple answer for potential is the ability to learn. Okay, so when you when you look at this, you can see who is more open to embracing something new or learning. That's your definition of potential, right? Now, um, I want to draw a point. Okay, that uh, if you ask 
what are the tools available? I, I think I can solve one of the question, right? Now, there are so many and it's evolving, right? Just pick one, right? There's one called, I think, recover time. That tool is so smart. It will detect how you use your time each day on your computer. And it will tell you that, oh, every couple of whatever you will stray away, you know, or this, it, it really helps. And then uh, it helps you to be conscious. Mm -hmm. um, even like for me, I use my Apple Watch. Uh, to track my sleeping patterns. Just that exercise makes me conscious that, hey, I gotta go sleep, All right? Just that, right? So if you see, AI is about giving you data at your disposal, mm. right? So uh, if you ask, how do you know if this person is gonna leave, right? So AI will help you analyze uh, your past trend of whoever resigned, uh, was there a certain trend? Is can they see clearly that majority of those who resigned came from this department or this manager, or after X years of working without promotion, or after X years of not changing jobs, right? So the tool is good. Of course, we can do this analysis ourselves, but it will take us a long, long time. Yeah, it's 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 actually. You know, so, something that we're building into our HR AI bot is, mm. is the ability to ask questions like that. How many staff do I have that have been here more than 18 months that have never been promoted? And then yeah. it, the system can bring that back quickly. Like, that's really, you know, great insights, you know, and, and, and that's where the technology is going. The For everybody um, who's still with us, thank you. Um, we will flash up a QR code to download um the reports and you can download it um the one for singapore one for malaysia or feel free to, to download both obviously we did want to move to q a we've got just over 10 minutes left so um we've seen um quite a lot of questions come through just let me take a look so the most i'm going to start with the most popular mm. how can ai help in employee retention and predicting someone leaving the company. And Jenny, I know you did touch on it, but I think we, we could go a little bit deeper here. So I'll, I'll, I'll pass this on to Robbie for, for his opinion. Sure, I think, um, so AI attrition prediction modeling has been around for, for a very, very long time, right? And, and with big data, I think companies have tried to do a lot around it, but still people are leaving and great resignation happened and silent quitting happened and so on. I think where I feel like AI would come into play is if you remember, I had touched upon uh, the neuroscience engagement surveys that we have. You know, for me, the predicting modeling needs to speak to multiple systems. It yeah. can't just be, oh, let me look at the past data. 40% of my people left because they were not happy with salary or... 60% of my attrition in the year happens right after the bonus payouts. Those are static data points, right? But when you use a neuroscience add to it and a few other data sources, what you'll be able to look at is the holistic view of saying, mm -hmm. by and large, your people in certain businesses are not happy. Then you go down to it to say why. And then you start figuring out predictive modeling. If um, and, and I would even go to the extent of saying personas of the managers and leaders and say, if you have certain personas leading a business, chances are that your attrition levels at particular businesses are going to be high. Right? So, so for me, it's a lot of those that need to come together. And, and uh, like we've been discussing for the last 45 minutes or so is mm -hmm. a lot of it is, is going to come down to the AI and the tools and more importantly, uh, you know, uh, it's the most efficient way of our time that we could mm -hmm. use. Having said that, I'm also going to leave with a caveat uh, saying that a lot of those data are still evolving. AI yeah. by itself is still in an adoption stage. Uh, and I would even argue that it's still at the definition stage in, in a lot of aspects, right? So mm -hmm. data that these models are going to be based out is going to be fairly new. But I would argue on the other side of the spectrum to say, that's still better than not having to do it at all, right? So uh, that that's how I would look at it. Great, great context. I think, um, and I, I agree. It's still in still in its infancy. You know, people are still trying to figure it out. So, <clears throat> excuse me. 
Um, our second most popular question is, what are the examples of AI usage in HR and how do we set it up? Maybe maybe I can uh, I can talk to that a little bit and give um, Ravi and Jenny time to just consider. So some good examples, and, and I've seen it is, is that ability to actually, you know, utilize the system to find out more information around the business. And it's not about prediction. It's actually about knowledge. So having the ability to ask questions that are insightful rather than pulling a lot of data and then trying to figure it out, I think that's really, really interesting. And there's definitely HR platforms out there where you can have that um, feature. And rather than having needing to set it up, it's already in there. You know, there's the ability to use it. So um, as I, I said earlier, like I think it's really important for HR leaders to consider you know, where is the business headed in the next three years? Like, are we really invested in the latest and, and you know, smartest technology or will we stick to this system because, you know, that's what we know and, you know, it's it's safe and it's it basically does um, the job that we need today. Ravi, Jenny, any any thoughts on that? Like the examples that you've seen and, and maybe the HR tools that, that you use? Sure. Um, you cover it and I think we cover it along the way. Right. There are many. One suggestion is immediately, you know, after this, go download chat GPT and just ask this question to chat GPT. You know, what are the AI HR tools? And they give you a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Time management, data analysis, project management, L and D. Um, right. I think one of the questions was uh, how do you assess values? There is no one tool that is holistic very very rare so i usually use two or three tools uh there are some tools that are specialized in values they ask multiple questions and from the multiple question you'll be able to decipher the values right so you look at competency you look at the values and you say hey does it make sense right so values include even humor uh leadership uh, brevity you know things like that and then this is where the human factor will come in and say, okay, this is the values of the people. This is it. I'm going to combine it. Hmm. Right. And Kevin, um, one of the things that we've seen off late being adopted a lot more is organizations looking to expand into newer geographies. So, so let me mm. take a live example. A client mm. came to us and said, hey, I'm looking to set up my tech hub somewhere in Asia and I don't know where. Right. Yeah. Uh, traditionally, what would have happened is business would have come from their vantage point. HR would have come from their vantage point. Operations folks would have come from their vantage point and finance would have a point of view as well. Right. So in our this thing, what AI tools can do is give you a holistic view. Uh, mm -hmm. It can not only talk about supply chain, it can talk about HR. Since we are talking about HR here, I'll stick to an HR example is from an HR standpoint, I could give a business view of what's your talent pool looking like in these five countries, right? What's the quality of talent? If I tie it back to the universities and education institutes, what does that quality look like? Can I do a rating on it? Then can I even talk about the proficiency levels of, let's say, a language? Uh, and now you have enough results to even, oh, this is subjective, so I'll leave that argument aside, is the IQ levels of different countries, right? Can you bring that in? Yeah. Uh, because some countries are more tuned mm -hmm. towards maths and science, whereas some countries are more towards culture and arts. So mm -hmm. what are you looking for? All of these can, you know, uh, the models can be formed based on AI. And when you get yeah. a report, you're getting a holistic view as against just looking at cost that we would have done in the past uh, and probably availability of talent. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. now you can almost expand it to 12, 13 factors and, and yeah give business a lot more holistic HR data points to look at. Yeah, I think that I think that's fascinating, right? Like actually understanding the potential markets, the yes. the IQ piece and, and it's not, you know, to to say one is better than the other. It's yeah. just that's how people have been brought up and this is what they yeah. value and, and this is where you can actually, you know, work well with these type of, of characters. What an, a really yeah. interesting question that's come through and I, I like this and I and this is um something that I think about a lot. Like one one common criticism of HR is we're becoming less human, more business. 
how would you use AI while upkeeping the human aspect of HR? And I might just set like a, a frame on this. So when I joined um, Employment Hero, which is about six months ago, I was I was really fascinated to figure out, okay, who, who are we speaking to? Who are our customers, our prospects? And, you know, I've had the, I've had the, the benefit of growing up in Ireland, working in Europe, working in Australia, and I've, I've been in Singapore for almost seven years. Like, I feel like I've seen the differences, right? Um, and modern companies and very much tech companies their HR department is not named HR. It's called people and culture. Yeah. And that was a new thing for me, you know, you know, seven or eight years ago. I was like, what does that mean? And I did some, you know, analysis um, of the number of uh, HR professionals in Southeast Asia versus the UK versus America versus Australia who utilize the title people and culture versus HR manager and it was you know I think you know what I'm going to say it was it was pretty distinct that still here in the region HR has this like um I guess perception you know like and and I would love HR leaders to be as human as possible because that's what where they're pulling the strings and the levers in the business and, and helping people be the best that they can at their role and you know obviously have them tuned into the business People still see HR, though, as, you know, the principal's office. It's where they go when <laughs> something has happened. You know, they're in trouble. Like, yeah. And, and I, I know this because I've seen people react to a meeting booked with HR and it's just like, oh, my God, what's happened? <laughs> you know, I'm in trouble. And that, that needs to change. And, and, you know, I've seen businesses come with people and culture and they've used They've taken away all that time that they use, you know, to for analysis, and are actually leaning into the business, meeting with people, talking with people, and yeah. you know, really having a big impact. But I have gone off on a, a, a little bit of a, a description there. But you know, how how would you address that? Like, if if someone is feeling like HR is becoming less human, and they are currently a HR professional, how does AI help with? ensuring that they upkeep the human aspect of the, the HR team. So the way um, I look at it, Kevin, and, and I could be biased as an HR person, is that I don't see this going away. Uh, the role of an HR will actually become more and more important uh, the way I see it. is. But what's going to change is you're going to get away from your transactional uh, mm. activities, right? You're going to, like, if I ask in this room today, how many of us really spend majority of our time doing HR activities? Leave aside your operational activities. How many times are you interacting, sitting down with your employees, sitting down with your business leaders, and so on? Chances are that three out of five are going to say the majority of my time goes into operations, right? And I do a little bit when I can. I think that's the switch that's going to happen, is you're going to be able to develop the more human side because you will have time to do it. And just to use a very crude example, I would say is what the banks went through. Uh, you, like, has your interaction with the bank changed? Yes. But have you stopped putting money in there just because you don't have a teller to give it to you? No, you still put <laughs> money in the bank, right? You just withdraw it out of an ATM or you start using a QR code. So for me, that's the correlation that's happening uh, where we are upping the game and we're giving a better experience to employees rather mm -hmm. than get sucked into operations. Brilliant. Jenny, any thoughts before we go to wrap up? Because I know everyone's probably starting to think about lunch. <laughs> yeah, I think in a nutshell, we have said that uh, we can use AI to introduce tools, asking people to rest every half an hour, uh, get up, you know, you've been sitting too long. And I think that will bring the HR aspect of the people mm. aspect, you know. But I'm also mindful that you know, I always pride myself in being a business person in HR. I'm not a HR person in business, right? So there's nothing wrong about being a business person in HR. Your mm. focus is still primarily business because if there's no business, you can, uh, you know, argue your way to whatever HR benefits you want. You can't, right? Mm. So wear that hat. Be proud to wear that hat that, you are a business person in HR, 
you're very familiar with the business, you understand the business where it's going, but because, and because you understand, you are able to bring in the HR aspect of things, right? Yeah. You say, hey, yeah. people are working this long hours, people should stand up and exercise, and you have a, a tool you can track. Like I said, all these are very cheap, right? Mm. Barely cost you any money. You try that, hey, everyone who uh, the, uh, stands up and walk five minutes every one hour, they have less MCs, you know, medical time and all this. Okay. I think, right. I, know, <laughs> I think that's great advice and perspective you know that the hr leader has got to be in the business you know like and, and really involved yeah um just wanted to, to wrap up and say a huge thank you to to, to ravi and jenny personally I, I really enjoyed that i found the examples you know gave me a lot of clarity and, and helped me kind of figure things out in what i do in my own role um for everybody that did join us we really appreciate your time we hope it was useful we will send out a survey at the end of the webinar and if you could fill it in and take one minute before you go have lunch that would be amazing and we will send you a thank you follow-up email with all the information from today and the recording so on behalf of um, all the team at employment hero thank you very much jenny ravi it's been a lot of fun and, and very insightful thank you Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.